Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm Larry Wydell, and before we get started, if you want to know exactly how to win again and again, go to wydellonwinning.com forward slash webinar now to watch something I've put together for you. Now let's get going into this episode of Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm getting ready to talk to Dick Walker, and before we do, let me just tell you, I don't know where this conversation is going to go, but one thing you'll you'll hear, and uh, you know, Dick grew up in Pennsylvania and played sports uh, with and against Joe Namath and the his brothers and that family. So he he's known him all his life. And the interesting thing is, Dick was a great athlete, but he had an injury and he got sidelined for I forget what he said, maybe fifteen months, something like that. And uh, had an accident. And so, you know, his aspirations of going forward professionally were gone. And, you know, if you're in an area where you've got a megastar like Joe Namath and he's getting all the accolades and everything, it's a little, <laughs> you feel like, you know, life has passed me by. I've got all the bad luck. That could be how you react to it. But Dick did not do that. And here's an interesting sideline that he probably hasn't even thought about. Namath went to Alabama, won national championships, played for Bear Bryant. But then in the uh, early stages of the American Football Conference, before there was a National Football League, uh, before the Super Bowl era and everything, he went to the Jets in New York and signed this outrageous contract, $400,000, at least at that time, it was just like, wow, $400,000. The interesting thing is that's about $33,000 a month. I met Dick Walker about 15 years later. And I remember going up and shaking his hand. In fact, someone introduced us and said, Larry, come on over here and shake the hand. Dick Walker, I want you to shake the hand of somebody making $35,000 a month. Dick Walker went through several business situations, did well, relocated down to Florida, made a couple of moves, started a new business, got that thing going. And by the 80s, when I early 80s, when I met him, he was already up to, he had matched what Joe Namath signed as the outrageous athlete. And of course, Namath only had a 13 year career. And 40 years later, uh, or longer, Dick Walker is still blowing and going in his business and uh, is still compounding the income growing the, you know, and so the thing is, Dick did pretty well, where you could have been crushed by that situation. Dick dug his heels in, didn't have any particular education or training or whatever direction to go in. He just took what was in front of him, excelled at it and kept moving up. And it's really the story of an amazing life of success. And Dick has offices all over the country. And the thing about Dick, and the reason I wanted to get Dick on is that for decades, I continue to hear second and third hand people saying they had a conversation with, they visited Dick, they, uh, he, you know, he, he said something to him, uh, at a meeting or a convention, or they heard him speak on stage and how it really impacted their life. And so, you know, Dick not only created something wonderful for himself, he's continued to have an amazing impact on so many people around the country that are trying to do the same thing he did and, and you know, start off with maybe, maybe some uh, uh, strikes against you, maybe no big advantage to uh to work with but a willingness to work and a willingness to accept responsibility and to move forward and dick has proven it continues to prove that can happen for you and you can build something far more last long lasting and profitable than just what could happen in an average uh professional athlete's career which let's face it the average uh, national football player is as like a three or five year career, 
Namath was about 13 years, but you know, the average player doesn't last that long. And so, you know, if you don't have a lot of these great abilities and whatever, uh, so what, you know, you can go out there and live your life and have great things happen to you. Dick is a great example of that. So let's talk to Dick Walker. How you doing, Larry? Great to hear from you, man. Yeah, we're talking across the state. You're over in Tampa, Florida, and uh, I'm over here on the East Coast. And so glad for you to be on and share uh, some of these priceless insights that you've gained over the years as you built a multi-million dollar business and also passed on the information and uh, had so many others be successful uh, inside your organization and also outside your organization and other industries and uh, an impact far bit bigger than your own uh, company. So thanks, Dick, for getting on. And uh, uh, how long have, I mean, how long have you been over there in Tampa? How long have I been in Tampa? Uh, since yeah. 1970, Larry. Wow. You're just about to learn where all the streets are. <laughs> yes, more, more or less. It was a, uh, a big little town at that time. Now it's a big, big town. <laughs> what, what brought you to Tampa? Well, I was on the East Coast in area for a couple of years. Uh, I moved out of Pennsylvania when I realized and understood that I didn't want to follow suit what was happening with the steel workers and Western Pennsylvania and the whole bit. It was a wonderful place to grow up. And I tell people all the time, banking in Pennsylvania has something in common, Larry. They're both great places to be from. Not, not at, but from. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I moved, uh, I had an uncle in Mount Dora and I used to come and see him in the summertime. I called him up one day. I was the uh, vice president at age 20, I don't know, what was that, 26 or something like that, of a savings and loan. And I uh, was dealing with a bunch of people that were uh, 40 years older than I was or more. And I was frustrated and I came home and called him and I said, hey, I'm gonna come and see you. He says, when are you coming? I said, tomorrow, if I can get a ticket, I'm gonna get sick tonight. So, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I said, I'll call the airlines and tell you what time I'm coming in. Can you pick me up? And he was a chiropractor in Mount Dora, a beautiful little town, as you know, up north of Orlando. Yeah, you don't and hear about Mount Dora that much, but it's a beautiful town. Oh, it's a beautiful little town. I flew into there, but uh, long story short, he had a couple of contacts and I uh, called a guy in Titusville about an hour after I got there, went to Titusville. An hour later, I had a job. An hour later, I had a, had a place to live. And, and I was married, but fortunately, I didn't have any kids. So uh, anyway, how did, that's how I got to Titusville. Uh, how did you get to be a vice president at age 26? You hit the ground running in your career. Well, what happened was, Larry, uh, I grew up in a town in western Pennsylvania, about 22 miles north, uh, right across the river from Beaver Falls. And I knew Namath real well. In fact, I'm going to see him uh, tomorrow night. <laughs> he's got a restaurant over in your part of the country in Jupiter yeah and a good a good friend of mine happened to be a uh an end on that team when Namath was a uh, senior at Beaver Falls High School and I grew up in New Brighton right across the river and we played against each other but he and I played on a couple basketball teams together we shot a lot of pool together uh and we've maintained, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't see him very often, but I see him once in a while. But I'm going over to see my buddy in Jupiter, and we're going to dinner tomorrow night at Namus Restaurant. And uh, supposedly, uh, my buddy says Joe's going to be there, and he's looking forward for us to get together. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, congratulations. That's, that's how I got to Florida, and uh, I was uh, lending money to different people. And uh, when I was in the savings and loan business there in Titusville, and uh, I loaned money to a couple of guys that were bankers in Tampa. Uh, doesn't matter their names because it's not important, but uh, 
one of them handed me the card and he says, I like the way you handled this. If you ever decide you want to come to the good coast of Florida, here's my card, give me a call. So I kept it. And a couple of years later, I gave him a call and he said, yes, uh, we have a correspondent bank here. They opened about four months ago and they're not happy with the fellow that's uh, in charge of the loans. In fact, uh, he's the only, the only real officer in the bank other than the president, it's a small bank just started. He said, I think you need to give him a call. So I did and uh, we got together and I, I drove to Tampa and about two hours after I was there, I got the job. So it was right by the University of South Florida. Oh, okay. How did you uh, get uh, steered away from the steel and over to the financial world at an early age? Hey, listen, there's a lot of information online, but there aren't a lot of people who have actually done something. In my case, I've actually built a successful business that's accrued over $5 billion in assets under management and has done well even during trying times. Now, if you want to know exactly how I've done this, go to whiteellenwinning.com forward slash webinar now. I've compressed a decade of learning into five short weeks just for those of you who want to give yourself an incredible advantage and are tired of waiting and watching others move up. Well, quite honestly, it's, it's pretty amazing, uh, Larry. Oftentimes in life, and I think it certainly wasn't just for me, it was probably for you and many, many people, and especially the ones that have done pretty well in business. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, Larry, at age 19, I fell off a ladder. I had a partial scholarship and I had finished uh, two years and uh, to play basketball and uh, fell off a ladder three days before to go back to my junior year and broke my neck in three places. Good uh, Lord. That's, that's not a good thing. <laughs> no, and, uh, especially for an athlete. Year, it took 15 months out of my life. Uh, three operations and about seven or eight months of rehab after three different uh, casts. And uh, it's only only by the grace of God that, that I was able to walk again, let alone do some of the stuff that I've been able to do. So um, I feel that, you know, that uh, Larry, I, I really feel totally this. I didn't for a long time. I was raised in it you know, in a family, in a church, but I didn't, I didn't know, I knew who God was, but I didn't know the Lord. Now, it's different now, but, and I want to talk about that, uh, but I do want, I do want you to think about this. This is pretty amazing. Um, when the president of the bank, uh, I was there for a couple of years and, and I got very frustrated because I feel like I was driving a, a horse and buggy down a four lane highway. I didn't like the way it was headed and uh, something happened in the loan meeting and uh, they asked me uh, a question about something and, and I stood up and I was very polite. I didn't tell them to stick their job or anything like that, but I said, gentlemen, it doesn't matter uh, because effective immediately I resigned. I had a three-year-old daughter and a one-year-old son and $1,200 to my name. Wow. And I walked out of the bank, walked past my assistant, my secretary, She's where are you going? I, I said, I'll be back tomorrow to pick up my stuff and I'll explain it to you, but I don't work here any longer. I just quit. So I got to the, the exit to leave the bank and the president of the bank stopped me and he says, uh, he says, listen, he said, I got to talk to you. And his name was Charles. I said, Charles, please, I mean this respectfully. Please don't call me and ask me to come back because I know that's probably what you're going to do because they had nobody there that knew how to make loans. That's the only way you made any money back then. And I said, don't worry, I'm not going to another bank. I don't want to be a banker anymore. He said, well, what are you going to do? He said, first, he said, where are you, where are you going? I said, well, eventually I'm going to go home. If I was a drinker, I'd go tie one on. But since I don't drink, I'll probably go get a Coke or something. But uh, he said, well, what are you going to do? And I thought for a second, I said, Charles, that is an amazingly outstanding question. And I don't know the answer, but this I do know. And Larry, at that time, I was not a Christian, okay? But I said, if the good Lord is willing, I will never work 
for another human being for the rest of my life. I will never have a boss again, ever. And I shook his hand and walked out the door and I stayed in touch with him from time to time. Larry, I, you know, I made good on that. <laughs> my first year out though, I only made $8,000. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, I had loaned money to, to buy cars. Uh, the guy came to the bank and he, he and I became friends. He was a, he was a, a customer of the bank and he was in the insurance business. He was buying new cars and he bought a new house and, and I loaned him some money to buy a place in the Carolinas. And I thought, man, I'm gonna call this guy. So I did, he said, I'd love to have you come on down. So that's how I got in the insurance business. And uh, eight, uh, and a year later, Larry, I made $8,000, whether I needed it or not. <laughs> that's all I made. But I sold used mobile homes part-time and I made $12,000 doing that, which is what I was making at the bank. So my first year out, I made 20 grand, 12,000 selling used mobile homes to some of the dealers I used to loan money to their clients and $8,000 selling auto and homeowners insurance. So that's how I, uh, that's how I got out of the banking business and uh, doing something else. What crystallized in your mind the idea of, I'm not just, there are people that are frustrated where they work. Uh, they don't see like the opportunity and like how they're being treated. Uh, they don't see a future, but they don't necessarily make the decision. I'll never have a boss again the rest of my life. What caused that to crystallize so clearly in your mind at the moment you decided to walk away from uh, that situation. Well, Larry, that's, that's interesting. The way you phrase that question, nobody has ever asked me that question exactly like that. They might say, well, you know, what made you do that? But they never said it as clear as you just did. I'd have, I'm going to have to think about that for just a second. But basically, what, what had happened was this. Uh, my dad was the only hero I ever had, not because he made a lot of money, but because of the way he lived his life. And he and my mother were married 67 years. Um, he's the only hero I ever had, Larry, my whole life. And the most money he ever made was $9,000 a year. Uh, and he was my hero, not because of where we lived, because he never had a new car until I bought it for him. But um, many people at his memorial, and he lived to be 99. He actually got into his 100th year. Uh, and I revered the, the ground this man walked on and, and my mother basically the same way. And, and I, loved, I loved the way I grew up in many, many ways. But oftentimes during when I was growing up and playing ball and going to school, high school, and then uh, I loved being around my, my family and my grandparents. My granddaddy used to be chief of police in the town. Um, but I, I felt, even while I was in high school, I felt like I was kind of in a rut. I, it's really hard for me to put this into words, but I, uh, and I didn't know what the reason was because I had everything that I think any kid would ever want to have. I had great parents, I had a great family, I had a great background. I, I didn't have any negative stuff, but there was something gnawing at me and I, I didn't want, no person in my family had ever gone to college. Well, actually that's not true. My dad went for two years, but he didn't graduate. Uh, nobody ever had a business for themselves and everybody worked in steel mills and so on and so forth. And Larry, the, the more I thought about it, uh, the more it gnawed at me. And I moved from that bank I was at after my accident to that savings and loan. And I thought, well, maybe this will be better because I was in charge. I had eight or 10 people. I'm 26 years old. And I had eight or 10 people answering to me. And I thought maybe this will be a challenge and something that I really will enjoy. Uh, and we grew the savings and loan during that period. We doubled the size of it. The thing was 45 years old the day I went there. And a year later, it was twice the size it was. But Larry, I was so frustrated, I couldn't stand it. That's when I came home and called my uncle and ended up in, in Florida. And, and I tried 
really hard at that bank, you know, to find what I was looking for. But Larry, the longer it went on, the more I realized and understood uh, I was not cut out to answer uh, to somebody. I, I had to find something where I could make my own way. And I didn't, I didn't buy into the, uh, to the ideology that the security you have is in your job. That's, that's a ridiculous thought. Uh, and, but I thought, it's, I thought it made sense because that's what I was exposed to. That's what my family did, that's what my dad did, that's what everybody did. But it kept gnawing at me that uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't for me. And uh, I always felt pretty good when I was playing ball because I was a pretty decent ball player. And I, I just felt like every game we started, we had a chance of winning if everybody did their part. And I felt if I could apply some of those same attitudes and competitive spirit. I mean, I, if I play games with my grandkids, Larry, I try to win. I know that sounds crazy, but, uh, but I do. And I think that came from my grandmother. But Larry, I just, I knew that, I, again, I didn't know what I wanted necessarily or where I was gonna go, but I knew what I didn't want. And I think there's probably a lot more people, Larry, that feel that way, but they just don't, they don't realize or have an option or they're not willing to take the, uh, take the step. You know, if we want something different, I think I understood if I wanted something different, the change had to begin with me. Uh, in fact, in fact, I, I wrote this down, uh, Larry, uh, years, years ago, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to find it, and I still have it. Changing tomorrow starts today. And, and I just, I realized I had to get out of what I was doing. And I didn't really know where I was going, but I, I knew where I wasn't going to stay. So I'm not sure if I answered your question or not, but. Uh, no, that was absolutely uh, great. And talk about what that means to you. Re, re, well, re, say, say it again and then, the, and then elaborate on it, if you don't mind. Changing tomorrow, comma, starts today. And, and Larry, I, and like you and I, and a lot of people that, that I've known in regardless of the business, uh, a lot of us aren't the most educated people. I don't have a college degree. Uh, I'm not the smartest or the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm competitive. Um, and I wasn't married. Well, I was married when I moved to Florida. Uh, I, had only, I didn't have any children. We'd been married a couple of years. Uh, but I didn't, uh, I had no real idea at that time that I was ever going to be in business for myself. You know, I mean, I was 20, let's see, 20, 20, 20, I was 26, almost 27 years old when I moved to Florida. And I was the vice president of that bank. And so I, I always had people that reported to me, but Larry, uh, I never had any training in management or anything like that. And I just, I kind of do what my dad told me. He said, uh, just try to do everything, Dick, by the golden rule. Just treat people the way that you would like to be treated and you'll probably do just fine. And I tried to, uh, I tried to do that. And, and we built, every place where I went, we seemed to improve the situation better than it was before I got there. And I think it's because uh, we had fun doing it. We knew what the goals were and we created a team attitude. And, uh, and I just, uh, I just enjoyed, enjoyed that. And by the way, Larry, none of my kids, I got four kids uh, and uh, none of them have a job. They all, I mean, they all earn a living, but they don't have a job. They all do different things. Of course, my son, Mark, is in the business uh, and he's uh, primarily on the security side. He helps me a lot. And I, uh, he, he's kind of, he's kind of like my, uh, DVP, but he's not designated as a DVP. Right. But he's he's functioning uh, in that regard in, in our business. So the thing that the thing that really excites me, Larry, uh, is being able to sell people on the the understanding. It's not an ideology. It's it, it's a, it's a it's a mind changing thought process that because you are where you are does not mean 
that's where you have to stay. I believe we were all put on this earth for a purpose. And our purpose is not to serve another, another master, which is the boss or the job. And uh, it took me a while to understand that because I was never exposed to anything like that. So I'm not sure if I, if I answered the, the, your question or not. Yeah, you, do it. you did great, Dick. Thank, thanks so much. If you enjoyed what you've heard and are dead serious about finding out for yourself exactly how this works in the real world, I've taken the most valuable business lessons I've learned over 40 years and put them into something for you to watch. Go to whiteellenwinning.com forward slash webinar now in order to move up as fast as possible. I'm Larry Whitell, and I run the Million Dollar Mastermind. Go, go, go.